Hey, this is Jonathan from the Pi Calendar team, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take an existing schedule you might have, like in the form of a PDF or an Excel sheet, and turn it into an online events calendar in your WordPress website. We'll be using a real Dance Studio schedule that one of our customers shared with us, but this example applies to a broad range of industries and organizations from nonprofits to massage therapists to sports clubs and so on. Let's take a look at this schedule that our client shared with us. As you can see, this particular studio has two different schedules, one for Studio A and one for Studio B. Inside each of these days of the weeks, there are a number of different classes with varying times and additional information like the difficulty level of the class. These events repeat every week, and we will achieve this utilizing our plugin called PyCalendar Pro, as it offers both recurring events and color-coded events. Incorporating this into PyCalendar can be done in a variety of ways, and the way that we're going to do it in this video is by creating a custom post type and a custom category. Do note that there are timestamps in the description of this video so you can skip ahead to the part that's most relevant to you. I'm beginning this tutorial with PyCalendar Pro installed, as well as a free plugin called CBT UI, which we're going to use to create our custom post type and our custom taxonomy. You might have used a different event calendar plugin for WordPress, which typically creates an events custom post type for you automatically. What we are doing here is creating our own custom post type, which we can call anything we want. In this example with our dance studio, I'm going to call our CPT schedule, but you could call it classes or events or anything that's relevant to your use case. So we'll click the CPT UI button in the lower left hand column and click add edit post types. In the slug field, I'm going to enter schedule all lowercase. Then I'm going to again enter schedule in both the plural and singular label area. Go ahead and click add post type and once the page reloads, you'll see that new schedules icon appear on the left hand side of your page. While you're still inside CPT UI, click the edit post type tab. It'll already have selected schedule for us since that's the only CPT we have registered. Scroll way down to the bottom of the page until you find the section called supports. Ensure that this custom fields checkbox is ticked and then scroll down to the save post type button once again. Now that we have our post type set up, let's go ahead and create a custom category so that we can better organize our classes. If we refer back to our schedule for this client, we can see that we have both a designation for Studio A and Studio B, as well as the difficulty levels indicated here. So we're going to use CPT UI again to create our custom taxonomy, which we're going to call location. In the left sidebar of CPT UI, you can see there's an add edit taxonomies. Click that and then this time we're going to enter locations as our slug, as well as location and locations for our singular and plural labels. In the attached to post type area, make sure you have selected the name of our CPT, which we created earlier. In my case, of course, it's schedule, so we'll tick that box and click the add taxonomy button. Then let's go back to add edit taxonomies and scroll down until you find the option that says hierarchical and change that setting to true. Now we'll hover over our schedule CPT in the sidebar and we can see there's a location button there as well. Click the locations button and let's create our categories. Go ahead and just enter studio A and then press return and then do the same thing by typing studio B and press return again. Now we're ready to create our first event. Hover over schedule and click on add new. From our provided schedule, the first class was called Modern Jazz, so we'll give our post the name of Modern Jazz. Then in the description, we could just write Technique Level 1 and Ages 10 to 13. In more complex scenarios, you might have a situation where you want that kind of data to be stored in custom fields or other custom taxonomies for filtering purposes, but we're going to keep it relatively simple for now. Now, looking on the right hand side of the page, ensure we have the schedule tab selected and there you can see the calendar and the event color and recurrence sections. These are added by Pi Calendar, and it's how we're going to control where our event shows up on the front end calendar. So let's go ahead and turn on show on calendar, which you can see enables a few more options for us. Click the start date button and you can see it opens a calendar picker for us. Set this event to something like Monday, September 11th, and this is the first day the event will appear on the calendar. Also note that there's a time picker above the calendar. So in our case for the modern jazz class, it runs from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. and we can go ahead and set our time there to a start time of 5.30 p.m. Now we'll click the end date button and again choose Monday, September 11th and this time we'll set the end time to 6.30 p.m. Moving a little bit further down, we can see the event color and recurrence settings. Our modern jazz class has a yellow color on our schedule, so let's set this event color to yellow. This setting changes the color of either the dot next to the event 
or its background color depending on what view your calendar is currently set to on the front end. Because our color is yellow, it's a good idea to go ahead and set the text color to something like black so we don't have any contrast issues. Next, let's enable this event repeats toggle, which again displays more options for us. Because we know our events repeat every week, we will simply enter the number one in the interval box and in the frequency dropdown, we will select the weeks option. Now our event will repeat at 5.30 p.m. every Monday indefinitely. If we want to set a specific date on which the recurrence ends, we can click the not set link near this stops on to tell PyCalendar which day we want it to stop repeating the event. In our case, let's just click through this event to stop repeating it on Monday, April 22nd, 2024, just as an example. Last but not least, go ahead and expand the location section, which is our custom taxonomy we created earlier. We can go ahead and select Studio B because this modern jazz class happens in Studio B according to our schedule. And then let's go ahead and publish your post. Now let's actually display the calendar on the front end of our website. We can add this calendar anywhere we want. So I'm just gonna go to my pages area, select home, and then we'll add it there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a short code block and type in open bracket, PyCal, and then close bracket like this, just like a typical short code. I'll simply update this post and view it on the front end. And now we can see the calendar is showing and displays our modern jazz class exactly as we intended. Now our client in this case specifically requested a list view rather than a standard monthly calendar. They want a list view of all the classes. And as you can see, we have a drop down to change the view. Let's take a look at each of these options one by one. And as our calendar gets more and more filled out with other events, it'll probably be best to set the calendar view to something like week list or week time grid, depending on your preference. We can go back to the edit screen of our homepage and add an attribute to our short code. Simply add a space after PyCal and type view equals list week, and then we can update the post. Now we can reload the homepage and you can see the calendar loads with that view selected automatically. For more information, click the link in the description for all the available shortcode attributes and values. You'll also notice the yellow dot next to the event, which is from the event color that we set earlier. So if I click the event, I can get more info as well. As you can see, it displays the event name, the start and end days and times, as well as a link to view the single post. Let's go back to the WordPress admin dashboard to our schedule area and create another post. Let's call this one tonic dance and the description will set as level is intermediate slash advanced. This event happens on Wednesday, so we'll enable show on calendar and then set our date to Wednesday the 13th. Our start time is 7.45 p.m. And then our end date is again Wednesday the 13th. End time is 9.15 p.m. Again, we're going to enable this event repeats and set the interval to one and frequency to week. We'll give this event color a deep orangish red color and set the text to black once again. We'll also set this event's location category to Studio B as well. One more time, we'll create another event, and this one's going to be called Dance Classic. The description will be just superiors. This class runs on Tuesdays from 7 p.m. to 8.15, so we'll set those details for our start and end times, just as we've done in the prior examples. The event color for this class is a pinkish color with black text again. We'll set this to repeat every week, just as we've done. Lastly, we're going to set this class to a location of Studio A. And now we'll publish this post and look on the front end. We can now see all three of our posts in this nice list view. So what if we only wanted this calendar to show events at Studio A and not Studio B? This is super easy and we'll again go modify our shortcode on the homepage and add two attributes. One being taxonomy equals locations and then terms equals Studio A. Now we'll save and view this on the front end and the calendar only displays schedule items from Studio A and none from any other category. This works because of our custom taxonomy we created earlier and how we organized our posts. You can learn more about filtering by taxonomies at the link in the description below. And this is another great feature available to our PyCalendar Pro users. A common question we get asked is how to show an event that happens at different times on different days of the week, but that they all still repeat. Well, for example, our modern jazz class happens multiple times a week. So we need to create an event post for each of those days of the week, and then just set them to repeat once a week, as we've already done in this tutorial. You could use a post duplicator plugin to make this super easy, and then you'd only have a few posts to manage instead of duplicating the posts every single time for every instance of that event every week. This is a lot more simple. Another great feature of PyCalendar is that it automatically detects the language format and time settings you have enabled on your site. 
So in this example, the website is in English, but if I switch my WordPress setting to French and reload the homepage, we can see that all of the days of the week have been automatically translated and all of the time formats adjust accordingly. The date format inside the popover also adjusts to month, day, year, instead of how it was before. However, if you have a case where your WordPress setting needs to remain a different language than the front end display, you can always add the locale attribute to your shortcode. So we could again go edit our shortcode on the home page and add locale equals fr, and it would result in the same thing as changing our WordPress settings to French, but now only for PyCalendar instead of your whole website. As you can see with this tutorial, we can create a very comprehensive schedule complete with color coding and recurring events in a very short amount of time. The flexibility of PyCalendar means that no matter how unique your business or use case is, there's a way to use this as your front end calendar system. If you have any questions, please check out our documentation in the link below, or feel free to reach out to us at our website, pycalendar.com. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jonathan, and I'll see you in the next one.